In today's video, I'm going to talk about the positive and negative impacts of an economic sector shift, and I'll be looking at the UK. This is because you need to know a named developed country example uh, for the IGCSC Edexcel spec in the economic activity and energy section, which I've highlighted here. So a brief background, the UK uh, was one of the first industrial countries um, because it had an uh, industrial revolution, which started um, to, to really kick in after about 1770. Uh, by the time we get to the 1950s, um, industry is well established and employs about 30% of the workforce. So it's very, very important. However, by the 1970s, uh, we start to see a sector shift. Um, what we start to see is secondary employment in industry declines and the services start to increase. Two of the processes I'll talk about are deindustrialization, that is the loss of industry from an area or country, and tertiarization, which is the increase in services um, in an area or country. So we can see uh, as one goes down, the other goes up, and this is the, the shift uh, in the uh, amount of people employed in one area um, going to another. So one of the reasons why uh, we have a loss of uh, industry, deindustrialization, is because lots of that industry goes abroad. So we have the global shift in manufacturing where industry from places like the UK, but also Germany and the USA ends up moving to emerging countries in Asia, uh, Central and South America because it's cheaper to, to do it there. The technology means that they can transport it from these areas to other parts of the world but all, labor costs are cheaper, but also we have lots of raw materials that are better. So we see the fact that industry gets lost from places like the UK. When the industry gets lost from places in the UK, we get social and economic impacts that are negative. Uh, and these happen specifically in industrial areas where there used to be uh, the industry jobs. So the obvious one is that we get high levels of unemployment. So people lose their jobs in industrial towns. We also get the people that are skilled can actually leave that area and go to other areas to get jobs. Where however, the people that are low skilled or semi skilled are often left behind because they don't have the resources or the skills to be able to move away. And we call this process the brain drain. As people start to lose their jobs, they therefore have less money, disposable money to, to spend, and therefore they don't have the money to go and spend it on services or leisure and entertainment. And this process we call the demultiplier effect. When people start to lose their jobs, they can often be pushed into things that they wouldn't normally do. So we can see criminal activity and crime rates can actually increase. And one thing that was very specific to the UK is um, in some of these industrial towns, lots of the leisure facilities and entertainment were actually linked to the industry. So there's examples of things like brass bands, which were connected to the um, factories and mining communities um, in which they were based. Same with sports clubs. And when that mining and when that kind of industry shut down, when the factory shut down, those facilities also shut down. However, as we're geographers, we know that this is an, um, an even spread across the UK. So we can actually see that there will be areas that are worse affected than others. And this happened in the, um, the north of England, but specifically the northwest, as I've, I've highlighted here. All of these areas over the last hundred years have seen a huge decline in jobs. Northern industrial towns in general are the worst to feel um, the effects of this because they had a high concentration of people working in industrial towns. Some of these cities and towns have had uh, investment, regeneration, but also tertiary jobs move into them. And so they've been able to rebound quicker. So the interesting thing here is that well, there will be social and economic impacts, but it depends on the amount of investment and opportunities that have been put in these areas. Even within towns, we can see huge divides between the industrial areas and non-industrial areas. Here's an example of Sheffield, which was famous for steel um, making. And what we see is in the industrial sector, which is on the east of the city, that is still much poorer today than the non-industrial west, which is that area that is highlighted in blue. So we can see not only are these social economic impacts done on a national scale with the north and lots of the industrial towns are worse off than places in the south often, but also within cities, um, sometimes between industrial and non-industrial areas. 
An environment in impact that's quite clear we can see here is when the factories got abandoned, they were left derelict. That land is therefore left unused. It's very heavily polluted. Some of the, that, that kind of the irons and ores from the, the factory can get into the ground and make it really hard to be reused. That means it's expensive to, to have to clean up. Um, but also we can sometimes find these areas being uh, used for criminal activity, things like drug dealing, because no one wants to go in them because they've been abandoned. So they can cause more social problems afterwards. However, now I'm going to look at some of the positive effects that have come from this shift away from industry and towards um, the tertiary sector. So we can see here that in um, Sheffield, the, the, the sky was full of smog. And one of the most obvious um, positive factors is air pollution in these former industrial towns and cities has gone down because I don't have factories spewing out pollution into the air. Similarly, places like Birmingham and other cities which had canals, they used to have a lot of the industrial waste just dumped into them, um, but they now um, don't have that happening anymore. So rivers and canals are a lot cleaner. And in some areas, they actually incorporate them into the regeneration scheme. So we can see here, here's a split picture of what it used to look like. And now they've kind of converted that into a uh, canal side restaurant. As we've um, seen the growth of services um, in, in some of these areas, um, it means there's been new opportunities. So we've got social economic benefits of the fact we've gone to a tertiary industry. Things like tourism and retail have been created. Here's an example of the Bull Ring in Birmingham, which is a really famous retail centre. Um, places like Birmingham, Liverpool, Manchester, Sheffield and Glasgow have all seen growth in tourism and retail um, since the decline of industry. It has been due to the fact that these areas have had a lot of investment from the government um, and various organisations. The, similarly, because of that, um, because some of the, the investment and regeneration, some of these cities that you had huge decline have actually been able to attract major international events. Birmingham Commonwealth Games, the most recently, but also Glasgow and Manchester have had the same event. And this brings in tourists to the area, which brings more money, which makes the city able to rebound um, and brings jobs and opportunities to local people. If we look at the UK in terms of since um, the kind of 1970s, um, we've actually seen the fact that GDP per capita, so the amount of money that people have um, per person has actually gone up. This is because services are actually worth more to the, co the economy than secondary and primary jobs. So as we've shifted towards services, what we've actually found out is that that means people individually are wealthier. Um, the country is wealthier, but individual people are actually wealthier as well. So we can see that this shift from, de from the de-industrialisation, the loss of industry to the rise in services, there is both positive and negative impacts of that. Uh, and some of those can be concentrated in some areas rather than others.